Hello, it is Thursday, October 7th, 2021. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to my New York Times crossword daily solve. It is a Thursday puzzle. This is the wacky puzzle. And honestly, I can already see uh, peering through the gauzy privacy veil here. This does look like a wacky puzzle to me. This is a strange looking grid. <laughs> but uh, let's not get to that just yet. Uh, first, I do want to quickly remind you that this channel is supported by my Patreon campaign and more importantly, by the patrons who have backed it. And by backing the Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash daily solve, you get access to bonus video solves for patrons only, as well as the possibility of exclusive merchandise and recognition at the end of these videos, and also special access to the Discord server. And I want to mention that because yesterday I referred to some very w nice, well-constructed first attempts at crossword construction by Metanome over on the Discord server, which you can find linked in the description field underneath the video, even if you're not a Patreon backer. And uh, I was contacted by someone to let me know that the link had expired to the Discord server. So if you had been trying to join the Discord in recent days and weren't able to, I'm very sorry about that. Please try again. Uh, if you click the link underneath the video now, it should work. I And I've set it now to not expire. I didn't even know that an expiring link was a thing that could happen. Such is my naivete surrounding Discord. So that's been fixed. If you're interested in checking out the Discord to chat about crosswords and other puzzles or to check out those puzzles from Metanome, which I think are pretty inspirational examples if you're interested in uh, trying out crossword construction because they're, they're really well done, uh, then hit that link in the description field underneath the video to the Discord server. All right, great. So now that that's out of the way, let's talk about two clues from yesterday's puzzle. Kathy Swope writes in to say that anoraks, which came up in the puzzle yesterday, were originally a warm hooded pullover worn by Inuits, and thus the derivation of the name from the Greenlandic anorak, which has a Q at the end rather than a K, at least in its Romanized form. Once lined with fur, today they are more commonly a waterproof down or poly lined pullover with, with a waist drawstring. So there we go. And Andy Hills says, a dangling participle is when a participle, the adjective form of a verb, or a participle phrase is included in a sentence ambiguously or referencing the wrong noun. An example that illustrates it well is taking the last bite of turkey from Thanksgiving dinner, a long nap would surely follow. In this case, the subject of the sentence is the nap. The participle, participle, participle phrase is incorrectly modifying the nap, even though I think most readers would understand it's actually referencing some sort of external subject. So the point being made here is that the nap is what took the last bite of turkey from Thanksgiving dinner, even though as an English speaker, you understand that's not what being what's being said. And I referred to, I, I had a, an example that I thought maybe was a dangling participle, but I thought probably wasn't. And I was right. It wasn't. Uh, for for instance, when you say school is where I'm going to go to, uh, he points out that is a dangling preposition. When I was in school, it was considered bad grammar to end a sentence with a preposition, but I don't know how, how much people are strict about that these days. In your example, too, is a preposition, which ends the sentence, that's where I'm going to go to. Uh, should be, that's where I'm going to go. I think the correct construction feels less natural, but those were the rules I was taught. And I think that's one of those things that is largely a stylistic convention. I do like to try to avoid prepositions at the end of a sentence because I think it can it can just feel extraneous but obviously there are many times when it's useful and arguably necessary okay anyway sorry for that deep dive there hopefully that was interesting to some of you um, let's head forward to today's puzzle the Thursday puzzle the wacky puzzle which this one certainly is this was constructed by Timothy Pollan edited as always by will shorts are we ready to get started? Okay. And I'm not, I don't think this time, I don't know. I don't know if I should go f continue on with the strategy of jumping down to the bottom of the grid to find the, um, the revealer of the theme immediately, or should I, should I wait? I don't know. Now, now that that strategy has been incepted into my brain, I, uh, I'm not sure if it's actually something I want to do every time. Maybe I won't. And we'll just see a big name in scotch. So could this be a 
the name of a distiller, a Scotch distillery, Scotch whiskey distillery, or could it be referring to something else as a bit of misdirection? I'm not sure yet. Family name on Seinfeld. Well, there's Seinfeld, obviously. There's George Costanza. Yeah, it's probably the case. Elaine Bennis, I think, was Elaine's name, and Cosmo Kramer, but Costanza fits, so that might be right. Memory blank. Memory card. To be shy is to owe. If you're shy, you owe money in, in colloquial terms. One-time Scandinavian export. I don't know, shad, a fish or something? I'm not, I'm not really sure. Rule that should be broken, and there's a question mark there. So rule, could this be to rule as to reign, as in a, a king or a political leader or something? Totalitarianism, I'm not sure. Rat blank, rat a tat. I think, I, I, you see this in the puzzle every once in a while, and I guess what it's getting at is a sort of imitation of a machine gun sound or something. I don't know if this has some other meaning of which I'm less aware, but but I, I'm going to put that in for now. Like the newest model, familiar, familiarly. Um, well, it won't have new in it, I don't think, because new is in the clue, so that N is slightly distracting. Not sure. Jewelry store eponym. Oh, well, this came, Zales came up in the puzzle the other day, J Zales, the jewelry store. So I'm pretty confident about that. And an eponym is uh, a name for which is, a, is a, a, you know, a person or a place or a thing for which something else is named. And so in this case, presumably the founder of the store was Zale. And so he is the, he or she was the eponymous founder of Zales, presumably. My thoughts exactly. It could be amen. Amen. Right on. Secure with down could be batten, as in batten down the hatches, secure the hatches. And we have that with down, indicating that for this word to mean secure, it has to have down appended to it, so batten down. One time Scandinavian export, right, what is this? Just don't know. Let's look at these crosses now that we have some, some more uh, letters filled. Patriots in New York. Well, they must be a team based on this fill. Oh, away team, perhaps? So, Patriots, a team that does not hail from New York, but when in New York is the away team. Memory, maybe it is, maybe it is memory card. That's a term, right? For the little SD cards, things like that, for your computer devices. Is that actually, I can't remember if that's what they're called or not. <laughs> Ram rod. And another question mark. So ram could be the animal as opposed to a, a ramrod to uh, sort of assault something. Tentacle fits, but that doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't seem to be anything. Oh, Saab. One time Scandinavian export. Saab, the auto make? Why would that be one time? Has something happened to Saab? I don't know what that's implying. Is Saab no longer Scandinavian or, or no longer manufacturing cars at all? I haven't a clue, but it must be Saab, right? I don't see what else would fit in there. Here we have rule that should be broken again. And here we have like the new, right, the newest model. Neatest? That doesn't work with that A there, and it's not a good, not really a good fill anyway. Uh, let's, just, let's keep looking for now. Have we looked at all the crosses? Oh, no, we haven't. Provincial governor in the Byzantine Empire. Going to need some crosses for that. Harmless rattler. So a snake, presumably. A harmless rattlesnake. A, a garter snake, maybe? Is that... Could that be what this is? Light carriage, informally. Name seen on the Kazakh-Uzbek border. Proctored event, maybe. Could be an exam. An exam proctor could run a test. A mark on one's record and working. M, uh, M something. Employed. Yes, sorry. What I was doing there with the E, if, if that looked odd, was I was trying to think of what letters could start this word. And certainly 
they would be vowels, almost certainly, unless this is some kind of strange abbreviation or something. And so I was trying to think of what were, and, and if you think of an I or a U, for instance, that tends to imply a negative something as an impolite or, well, uh, well, I guess U-M is a little weirder. But anyway, I was trying to think through what different prefixes might make sense. And E-M felt the most plausible for working, which has a positive connotation, M-powered, things like that. And then that led me to employed. I don't know if that strategy is useful to anyone, but that sometimes someone asked about my mental process a while back in a comment, and I didn't address it on the video because I, uh, I don't remember why, but I think I maybe just had too many other things to read that day. But that's the sort of thing that can be useful sometimes is to try and think maybe there's a letter that can fit better than other letters. And if you don't arrive at the word, I would have just deleted the E so I don't get distracted in case it's wrong. Um, but that sort of thing can be useful to try and think about what you already know about language that might at least suggest something that could be correct. Obviously, the most straightforward version of that is putting an S at the end of a word that you expect to be plural, which is not always wrong because not all plural words have an S at the end, like mice, for instance, mouse and mice, uh, but many of them do, so it can be a useful starting point. Okay, mark on one's record. Not sure. John McRae, author of In Flanders Fields. Is that the poem? Um, oh, and it's an example of this. Per oh, a war poet. Yes, so it is It is the, the poem. And remember when you see E.G., this is looking for an example of this thing. So it's not, you know, it's John McRae. I mean, it could be asking about his, I don't know, his nationality or something or his profession. I mean, in this case, it's it's his, the... Um, his status as a practitioner of a particular field of poetry, war poetry, in Flanders Fields. It's a uh, famous uh, uh, great war poem. Okay, let's see. Now this looks weird. I hope it only looks unusual to me because I'm not familiar with it rather than because it's wrong. A light carriage informally. I don't know about this garter. First drink sold in all aluminum cans. RC Cola, I'm guessing with that E, and I'm sort of discounting this E because I think this is incorrect, and I might have really lucked out with these two crosses, to be totally honest. I wonder if this is RC Cola, which I only suggest because it's one of the only words I can, uh, brands that would be, that would fit in here in terms of sodas, I think. So what is this? Big name in Scotch. Oh, Doers. I had that, I thought, I thought it might be Doers, but I didn't say it for some reason. Okay, so what is a light carriage informally? Informally, I don't know. Could it be a sleigh? Is it a sort of misspelling of sleigh, S-L-E-I-G-H? Is that, well, I don't think that makes any sense at all. Um, harmless rattler. Boy, I don't know. I feel as though I've this is one step forward, one step back over here. Um, maybe I'll just move forward for now. Memory, this does look like memory card, doesn't it? And then ramrod. Could it be a Dodge Ram, a truck? Oh, yeah, it is. Rear axle. So Ram is a is a truck brand. And so this is a, a rod, the rod that connects the wheels in the back of the vehicle. Well, wow, clever. Mm. And then the newest model is next gen, next generation phone or console or whatever. Oh, and then the rule that should be broken was, is tier. So I'd said something like totalitarianism or something, which was ridiculously inappropriate for a clue of this length or an answer of this length. So I should have kept going with that thought and thought of some synonyms there. Tyranny, a rule that should be broken. <clears throat> Okay, what jelly rolls are filled with L's maybe? There are four letter L's in jelly rolls and they're they're filled words. They're sort of inside the words, if you see what I mean. So maybe, could it be L spelled that way? Usually in the crossword, L's is spelled E-L, not E-L-L, -L, but I kind of think this might be what it is. A frozen asteroid or planet, I suppose an ice ball, literally. If it's frozen, that's what it would be. And a word often before a year could be circa, approximately. 
you know, if you're dating something historically and you don't know the precise year, you might say circa 532 AD. Boxer Trinidad. Uh-oh. Um, not sure. One who's not a fan. I mean, it could be someone who disparages somebody. They're literally, they're not a fan. They're not an enthusiast of that person. But it could also mean not a fan as in not a device that blows air in a direction. I'm trying to think, would there be something that might mean that? One who's not a fan. I'm not sure. I'm going to move on for now. One way to present prevent stock losses. So without the question mark at the end, this might suggest inventory in a store, you know, prevent shoplifting or something like that. But I wonder if stock in this case means livestock, animals, maybe a lasso. You would, the sort of rope that you would use to catch an animal to prevent it from going too far astray. Don't just take my word for it. Ask anyone. Ah, there we go. That's pretty good. Okay, Mauna Kea, I think, is a volcano, maybe? Sounds familiar with that K, anyway. Memorable 2021 hurricane. Oh, this is interesting. Sorry, I haven't addressed this, actually. We've got these unchecked squares here. And this came up once, I think, very much towards the beginning of this series, if you've been watching these videos for a while. But if you haven't, an unchecked square, I, I don't know why I didn't I should have pointed this out right at the beginning of the puzzle. I don't think I looked at it very hard. I just saw, wow, weird looking grid and went moved right into it. But an unchecked square is when you don't have any crosses. So you have to get this letter, you, you have to get it right without being able to confirm it in the other direction, in this case, without being able to confirm it horizontally. And I've actually already filled several cells that way. Um, but this one is tough because it's the it's well it's a little tougher arguably because it's the beginning of the word. Um, these things these things can be easier when they're long words and therefore you know I mean the first letter of a word is usually the most helpful one. If there's going to be one letter that's helpful, it'll be the first one because it's just easier for our brains to access words that way than by imagining what the you know fifth letter uh, extrapolating the rest of the word from the fifth letter. So here. I think maybe Ira, 2020, 2021 hurricane, that's this year. You'd think I would just have this as a lock, but I don't. That's really sad. Um, so anyway, I bet this will all have something to do with the theme of the puzzle. That That's my suspicion, um, which we don't know yet because we've not yet sought out the revealer. Should we? Maybe now since I'm talking about the grid, maybe let's seek out the revealer. Not that, not this. Oh, here, I see where it is. Oh, it's over here. It's It's not as is usually the case on the eastern side of the grid, although actually it sort of is. Yes, it is, because it, it, it extends across the entire bottom row. So I think that actually does fit within the traditional revealer location of across clues towards the bottom of the grid off to the east. And that includes this when it spans the entire row. So this says lakeside activity, or a hint to the words spelled across the fifth, Right, so that's this long one here with all the check unchecked squares, eighth and eleventh rows of the completed grid. Right. So these are um these are the rows with all of the unchecked cells. So it's a lakeside activity that hints at the words that are spelled out here. This looks like it's gonna end in ing actually. If if it's so annoying that I can't select these horizontally. So it always I always have to select the vertical one. But if you look at, at the, the row above the one I currently have selected, we have ing. So it could be rolling. Um, yeah, it could be rolling. I'm not sure. What is that? Does that, what is that? Word? Oh, a demerit is a mark on one's record. Yes. Okay. So rolling is the word going across. Boxer Trinidad. I'm still not sure. Provincial governor in the Byzantine empire. Oh, an exarch. Ah, okay. I was trying to think of a specific fig historical figure, which I wasn't really having any, having any luck with. Um, oh, Errol, Errol C., on the Kazakh Uzbek border, and then a caramel's rattler. Oh, it's not a snake; it's a maraca, the instrument. Maracas. That is so clever. What a what a funny, clever clue. And it doesn't have a question mark because it doesn't need one. It's completely literal, but it it actually is is sort of mis misdirected because an instrument, of course, a musical instrument is harmless. You wouldn't need to specify that it's harmless. So the fact that they did specify that it's harmless 
is makes us think about a kind of thing that might ordinarily be harmful. Anyway, light carriage informally is a shay. That sort of sounds familiar, but I'm, I'm not bringing the definition to mind. So the hurricane must be Ira, right? And then left a bad impression on probably a D at the end. Silas Blank, first American diplomat to France. I'm not sure. Ancient invaders of Rome could be the Goths. Left a bad impression on rained? What does that mean? Dinged? Oh, Hurricane Ida, probably. Dinged, as in left a dent in something, a bad impression in this case. So a bug collection could be intel, in, uh, covert intelligence gained by bugging someone's phone or whatever. Okay, what is this? Rolling, and then here we have Rosetta. Rosetta Stone, and here we have rolling, could be rolling stones. Oh, I get it. So uh, maybe I won't say what it is yet, so that um, you, may, you may have also spotted the theme, but in case some viewers haven't, I'm going to keep going until it's spelled out, and then hope, you know, maybe you'll, maybe you'll spot it along the way, or already have. What may be drawn with black and white? Cross tape. Uh, cross fade. Could it be like a the thing that's written with chalk on the pavement that on the asphalt that you would hop, play hopscotch on? Is that what is that called? Cross something? I don't know. I'm gonna move on. Flush, for instance, could be a hand in poker or something. To prepare as a certain movie snack. Popcorn is a common movie snack, right? Air, air pop? Is that a verb? Uh, 2.0 for one could be a GPA grade point average in university. Oh, a chess game may be drawn in black and white. Drawn with black. Oh, oh, I see. Because you, there could be a draw in chess. There could be a stalemate. Uh, and, the, and the two sides in chess are black and white. Very clever. Moonscape feature... Moonscape feature. What? What's on a moon? What's on or the moon? I suppose a mesa, maybe. Not sure. A celeb, a celebrity, but an abbreviated form of celebrity. So some an informal term or an abbreviated term. Um, I don't know. I don't know about mesa. I'm gonna I'm gonna remove that. I'm not sure if it's helping or hurting here. Took full advantage of the buffet. Say could be ate a lot. Maybe an unmoved reaction. Um, I'm not sure. Celeb. I mean, it looks like I want it to be star. All star, maybe? West Coast burger chain with a not-so-secret menu. Okay, well, I do know what this is, so it's not all star, so maybe I'll delete that all. It is in and out One of, this, probably the only fast fast food chain that I miss or could possibly miss from uh, living in the United States. And even then, it's not everywhere in the United States. It is, as it says, on the West Coast and a few other places, little scattered pockets. But there was one in and out in San Francisco. And in and out is a great, very, uh, extremely inexpensive, but very good and high quality uh, hamburger joint. Okay, vegetarian spread. Mayonnaise, that doesn't, doesn't fit. I don't know. Disposable young boy. Bow. Disposable young bow, which does, I think, probably refer to a boy. A boy toy or something? Um, I bet it is boy toy, and it's not ate a lot for the buffet. It's ate a ton. I shouldn't have filled in lot. There's so many things that that could be. I shouldn't have uh, assumed. So I bet this is boy toy. And then five spots could be, I think, I think that's Abe's, Abraham Lincoln on the, uh, see the $5 bill? You'd think I would know that, wouldn't you? One side in the Ryder Cup. Not sure. Not sure what that is. Vegetarian spread, right. Oh, yes. Okay. So, okay, right. So I know what this is. So the uh, lakeside activity or a hint of the word spelled across the 5th, 8th, and 11th rows of the completed grid. Uh, here we have stones because, like we identified earlier, we've got rolling stones and rosetta stone. 
and I'll just go ahead and fill this in now. What the theme is doing, since we got here naturally, is skipping stones. We have these types of stones that are spelled out by skipping over these black cells in the way that a stone skips over the water, jumps up and down over the water as a lakeside activity. So that is very clever construction and makes these in a way, it kind of makes unchecked the unchecked squares not unchecked. It actually gives us a horizontal check. In the case of rolling Rosetta, you know, you can sort of imagine the, that these, um, those, those vertical broken up lines have a clue that is, you know, basically types of stone, you know, type of stone or something. You'd sort of just imagine it yourself. But obviously the revealer is serving as that clue for us with this explanation here. So what is this? What would this, what kind of stone would this be? Oh, I think I know what it is. I bet it's the Blarney stone in Ireland. Let's see if that works. Unmoved reaction. Oh, it could be dry eyes. You didn't, didn't well up at something emotional. Here we have moonscape feature. I'm still not saying what this is. Here we have separate, could be split up. I mean, it could be separate, an adjective, or separate a verb. In this case, I think it's separate a verb, split up. Tailgate grid, oh, hibachi maybe? Tailgate grill, sorry, not grid. My, my, my sort of connection between my brain and my mouth, I find is a little bit more tenuous when I'm doing these videos. Uh, Equilibrium. Stasis? Yeah. Oh, vegetarian strategy. Is this a tapenade? No, that doesn't fit. No, sorry. Keep saying things and they're wrong. On every occasion, each time, and a big name in beer. Uh, not sure. Vast expanses could be a sea, seas. I mean, literally, a sea is a vast expanse, but also metaphorically refers to a vast expanse of something. To lose value quickly as a stock, for instance, would be to tank it for, for it to tank. Oh, big name in beer. Anheuser, you hear that? Anheuser Busch is, I think, a big beer owner. News answer, Anchor Smith informally. Right. So I think it's spelled like this. Let's look at these crosses. Right, we had split up already. Enthusiastic ascent in Spanish, CC, right? So yes, yes. Here we have R&B pop vocal group, Boys 2, Boys 2 Men. I saw Boys 2 Men live in Seattle maybe, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago? 13, I bet it was 13 years ago, actually. Okay, on the surface, it must not look like much. Oh, and a berg, an iceberg, which if you've ever seen those illustrations, they, they look quite large above the surface, but then underneath the water surface, they're much bigger. Oh, a vegetarian spread, a bean something, probably? I don't know. Prefix for fireworks. Prefix for fireworks. I, I actually have no idea what this is. Um, don't know. Imbibe is uh, to, a taupe, I think. Um, sort of a, a word to describe sipping, sipping at a drink, I think. Europe is one side in the Ryder Cup is Europe. I don't know what that means. I don't know what the Ryder Cup is. I'm sorry. <laughs> Prefix for fireworks. Oh, pyro maybe? I don't quite get what that means. As in a sort of a pyromaniac or a word, you know, pyre, pyre. I mean, it is a prefix. I mean, pyro is a prefix for words dealing with fire. So I guess that's what that's getting at. I wonder if there's a more subtle meaning that I'm not seeing. And then a vegetarian spread could be a bean pate. So, oh, what is this? Oh, how did I get? Oh, I, I, I filled in that A for star and then I never removed it once I got rid of all star. And I think that's wrong because a celeb could be an A lister. And Silas Dean looks more plausible than Silas Dina. So A-lister. Okay, so we have what? One more letter. Oh, no. Oh, one who's not a fan. Okay, good. It's Boer. Okay, great. So I don't need to take a guess on Boxer Trinidad, although I could have guessed Tito. That would, I don't know what other, that's, that's the only plausible letter there anyway for a name, I think. So Boer, great. There we go. 
All right, there's the Thursday puzzle. That was fun. That was fun and a really cool theme. I um, Let me know if you solved this puzzle and how long it took you to come to grips with the theme. It's very clever. Uh, I So I did, yeah, I did sort of pick up on the stone thing once I got Rosetta. That was sort of lucky. I'm trying to remember how I got Rosetta. I think I had O-S-E-T-T maybe and was missing. No, I did have R from Circa. So that, that helps. I didn't have the O. Yes. So all I was missing was the O and the A, I think. And that was not very, that, that was a lot easier to get because I was there actually similarly to sort of trying to imagine the E at the beginning of the puzzle. I was trying to imagine what could go at the end of this with that double T. And again, in English, you just think about sort of how words tend to look. And I mean, Rosetta is not an English word, I don't think anyway, but, but the point being there really aren't very many options for what that could could be. If it ended with an E, it would look very French. Rosette, which is, in fact, a French word. Well, I didn't have the R yet, but I just mean that kind of word. And U doesn't make any sense. You probably wouldn't... I mean, a lot of words end with TH, but not if there are two Ts at the end. So it's just sort of trying to think, what could possibly go there? And there really aren't very many options. And then when you think of the whole word together, there just weren't very many options. And so that that's... If, if you were wondering why I why I guessed it was Rosetta, which, you know, was speculative. It's not that I knew that that's what it was, but I thought maybe it kind of doesn't look like very many other things fit. Uh, and then Blarney was less a sort of construction. Blarney was less of a deduction based on the specific letters and more that by the time I got Rosetta, it was pretty clear these were both stones and we already, by the time I got the Blarney, we knew that it was stones that was written down here. And I just figured, well, what are some famous stones? <laughs> and uh, the Blarney stone is one of the, I guess, relatively few famous stones, I suppose. There aren't very many and we've got three of them reflected in this puzzle. Anyway, quite fun. There were some tough, tough, um, tough words in here, I would say. Exarch, tough. George Costanza would be it's a classic clue that's incredibly easy if you if you know the thing in question. Seinfeld would be basically impossible if you just don't know it. I mean, there isn't there's no way to infer that really without just getting the crossing the whole thing. So uh, apologies if you <laughs> didn't know that. Anheuser similarly, um, actually in a very similar location to Costanza. Uh, Anheuser I think would be tough. I'll have to look up Ryder Cup. Is that a sailing thing? I think it might be sailing. I'm not sure. I'll have to look it up. I don't remember. Um, but yeah. Uh, oh, and then Tito was, was was very difficult for me. I think, to be fair, Boer, Boer you can really infer. John McRae, author of In Flanders Fields, War Poet, that might be slightly obscure. So, But hopefully the poet part becomes at least relatively apparent. Anyway, do let me know how you fared with this puzzle. Um, I did enjoy it. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please do subscribe. Please subscribe to the video if you would like to see these as they go live each day. Can't hurt. You don't have to watch it, but you might as well subscribe so that it's there waiting for you if you do choose to do so. And thank you to everyone who has subscribed. And thank you to everyone who has contributed to the Patreon campaign. Uh, that is the way that this series can become sustainable for me going forward. And I'm, I, I'm very thankful to everyone who has chosen to help make that happen. And you can see the various benefits you can get. Bonus solves, of which another will be going up. Um, well, probably two will go up this weekend because I've, I've recorded the um, first competition puzzle of the Boswords uh, Fall Themeless League. And, and we'll release it once the solution to the pu puzzle has been made public. And then I'll, I'm sure I'll do the, the weekly um, speed solve of the mini puzzle as well. So you'll have two, two more bonus videos this weekend, plus special access to the Discord server. And don't forget, those fun new puzzles by Metanome are over there if you want to try your hand at them and give him some feedback as well, if, if, if that's interesting to you. And uh, various other perks, such as being thanked personally at the end of these videos, as I'm about to do. Thank you so much to Timothy Mark, a.k.a. Bidiot Bales, as well as, as always, the excellent Hood Monster. So thank you, Timothy Mark and Hood Monster. I very much appreciate your support and the support of all the other Patreon backers and also 
you for watching. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Thanks for making it to the end. Uh, and I'll be back tomorrow for the Friday puzzle. I just very much suspect will be a much more straightforward puzzle than this one, but maybe also a little more challenging. We'll just have to see. Join me then. But until that point, have an excellent remainder of your Thursday. Take care.